Well, Henry Kissinger and a group of other guys got together and they put together this Plan 2000 that I was privy to. And I put up the summary of all of it up on my website, which is nohoax.com. The Plan 2000, which was, again, 27 years ago, calls for a war to get started in the Middle East in the year 2000. That war is to spread to the United States, is to reduce the world's population down to 500 million. With only 20 million, and that's the Earth's carrying capacity, 20 million Americans that are expected to be left alive. Now I sat in on the meetings. How are they gonna do it? By all means necessary. See, look at everybody out here. I want you to hold this one arm out. And I'm, and I'm gonna push down on it. I want you to hold it up, ready? He's pushing down. It's pretty good, strong. Okay, now I'm gonna put this in the, I don't want you to look at it. Put this in your hand. Hold it. Oh, okay. Okay, you got it? Got it. Yeah. <laughs> now, what does he have in his hand? Sugar. 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 It's baritone. Oh, <laughs> Top Donald Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld. That's Donald right. Rumsfeld. <laughs> he got $50 million for him. Aspartame. Equal and aspartame. All your diet sodas. Diet sodas shut down the brain bar bar uh, blood barrier. They cause it so you quit thinking. Kids that have taken uh, typical four cans a day by the end of the school year can't even remember their neighbor's name, and he didn't even know it. Can we go through what exactly an excitotoxin is? Well, an excitotoxin, uh, basically what it does, it's a normal transmitter in the brain. These are chemicals that allow brain cells to communicate. Um, but if it's in even a minute over-concentration in the brain, it causes the brain cells to become extremely excited. And they become so excited, they'll very quickly burn themselves out and die. That was one of the first observations by Dr. Olney, and he gave it the name excitotoxin. Methyl alcohol, wood alcohol, has obligatory metabolism to formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, which is embalming fluid, is 5,000 times as potent a poison as is I mean, I was alcohol. By far, the, the, in the best shape of my life, and I was definitely in the best shape of any U.S. diver. Um, and uh, anybody will tell you that. And so I was very conscious of what, I mean, I thought it wasn't a problem. I started drinking diet soda back in like high school. It's unbelievable what that stuff is in. I mean, it's in protein powder. I was drinking the protein bars that I was eating in between practice. Um, the equal I used in my sweet tea, anything. Um, I mean, I went through my, my, my kitchen and uh, went through each cupboard and the uh, refrigerator and threw out everything. Uh, it was in, it's in yogurt. Um, and uh, that was the only change I made. I mean, I didn't tell my doctor that I was off my medicine until about three or four months later when, because I wanted to have um, a series of blood tests come back normal um, to show her, I'm like, listen, I have not been taking the medicine. I've not changed anything other than my diet and taken a multivitamin. And uh, I'm totally Anyways, fine. this friend came up and said, do you realize Diet Coke can do this? And I laughed and I said, I don't believe you, but I have nothing to lose but a chemo treatment, so I won't drink another Diet Soda for one year. I said, I won't, I'll throw this one away and that's it, I won't drink another one. I was supposed to begin my treatment in September. It would have been September of 2003. I went back to my neurologist and was doing significantly better. My eyes were dramatically improved. I hadn't lost my vision. My numbness was, had begun on my left side at that point and was numb up to my left knee, which never progressed again since the day I stopped drinking it. And um, of course, the neurologist asked me, he said, did you start your treatment? Is that why you're doing better? I said, no, I didn't start my treatment, but I stopped drinking Diet Coke. Um, he said, well, the only way you can prove that to be the the cure for you is to go back on it, which at that point I said, no way, I'm finally feeling better after a couple of years of feeling terrible. So then in May of 2004, I called them and I said, if you'll believe that this is the cause, then I will go back on it. If you'll, if you'll really take it seriously with people. That's gonna be hard. <clears throat> So in May of 2004, I talked to him. He gave me very specific directions on what I needed to do. He said, drink, I want you at the same time every day to drink one diet soda and keep a journal of exactly what 
is happening. What happened after the first one? Well, the first one, it says, I drank it at 11 o'clock, May 6th. I drank one Diet Coke. I became extremely thirsty, became nauseous and shaky. Um, I, had a mild, I had a headache and my neck ached, which I had totally forgotten that that was a problem that I'd had until it came back. And the symptoms lasted until 5.20 that day, so about six and a half hours. Then the second day, I again drank it at 11 o'clock. So you had a second day after well, going through that. I did. Well, I did it for four days, I believe, before I said, so yeah, I did it for four days. And all the symptoms continued. By Monday morning, um, I had to stay in bed. I couldn't get up. And so I absolutely wouldn't. Hives, Sunday hives came back, which I hadn't had at all. Um, but by Monday, I called and said, I can't do any more. I've done four days, four sodas only. Um, I, I felt so awful. And all of the same fatigue. I slept two and a half hours in the morning after I got up. I went back to bed. I went to bed at nine o'clock that night. I just, um, I couldn't function again. How, how long was the experiment supposed to last? They didn't say. I didn't, um, they said just let's start, let's do it this way. And I called them when I was starting, but I did call on Monday and I said, okay, this experiment's over. <laughs> so I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I've proven it. I know what happens. I'm finished. Whenever you hear that the FDA is the industry's henchman, they are, it's a very accurate statement. They, you would call me up and said, I just had a reaction and I realized that it had aspartame in it. And I know that when I'm not taking aspartame-laced products, that I'm fine. And the moment I get this, I get blurred vision and a headache, or I, I can't keep my balance, or whatever it is. And so the FDA eventually was, got tired of all the complaints. So they, they, they just made it all go away by setting up a different hotline, uh, not... not um, um, documenting all of the phone calls properly, not being able to give anybody any information. It was just they were receiving data from the general public regarding aspartame and did absolutely nothing about it. That's where we're at right now as we sit here and chat. With all of the problems aspartame has had, you think they would have taken it off the market? They have. Since then, I found out all kinds of things about cures for everything. We can cure everything on this planet, but you don't make money curing things. You only make money treating them. Isn't that right?